excellent. Oh, good morning, it's Chad the Ghost Hunter, and riding shotgun is Holly, and then in the back seat we have Taylor, and we just got done with the Kentucky event last night at the Murray Station Homestead uh, with the Wraith Chasers. It was really good, uh, more than we expected. It's pretty exciting, and now we're headed across Kentucky over to West Virginia, and we're going to Point Pleasant to go check out Mothman stuff. So, Holly's excited, look at that. So, we're on the way, join us. All right, so I'm driving, we're in the middle of, I don't know where we are, somewhere in Kentucky, Vanceburg, Va Vanceburg Kentucky, and I'm looking on the side of the road and I go, oh my God, there's a bear climbing a tree. I can see a black bear <laughs> climbing up a tree. So we turned around, we're on the median out here, like I don't even know where we are. But anyways, so we drove back, and there it is. See the bear? I'm like, there he is. No. It's a freaking black garbage bag. <laughs> you got me so, all excited. I, I know. Pet the bear. <laughs> I was excited. But from the road, man, that's what it looks like. So, anyways, time to get back on the road. There's a museum that's closed. Look at this. This is a water panther stone. Believed to have been a Shawnee altar stone made by the Water Panther Clan, which was part of the Chief Cornstalk's clan. This stone was found nearby in Leon, West Virginia. And the spiral shape of the tail is believed to represent the whirlpools that were in the Kanawha River at the time. And the Shawnee Indians believed that this would drag the evil spirits to the bottom of the river. And the different levels of the steps indicate where the Shawnee placed offerings to their gods. Check it out. Hard to see it on there. Well, if you get it at an angle, you can definitely see it. It's really cool. People have put little rocks and offerings here. As soon as you come into Point Pleasant over the bridge that you see in the background, right here is the intersect of two rivers, the Ohio and the Catawba River. And this is where the Battle of Point Pleasant was fought. Underneath this monument lies the remains of Chief Cornstalk. Looks like he died in 1777. Now all around 
Point Pleasant is this giant wall. The locals say it's a flood wall to keep the waters from the Ohio River entering the town and flooding it. So I'm leaving the park here at the end of Point Pleasant and on the roof of that building looks like they mounted a part of a steamboat up there or a tugboat like the little wheelhouse and here's another one it's like a, a wheelhouse for a one of the tugboats and it looks like it's a little burger little burger place interesting well, here it is downtown Point Pleasant it's actually a real historical town a lot of battles fought here a lot of history there's a lot of uh, plaques everywhere you go state historical markers There's a little diorama of the igloos, or the ammo bunkers, that's out in the TNT area. We'll go out there in a little while and go look at the real ones. You can see inside the Mothman Museum here, there's all kinds of newspaper clippings about UFOs and the Mothman and eyewitness reports. You can just see they're everywhere. Here's a prop from the movie The Mothman Prophecies. And here's some more props, a paint bucket carried on the movie, and here's some uniforms worn by Laura Lenny in the movie. It's kind of neat, actual movie props. There's some glass used in her car crash scene. Breakaway glass, kind of neat. Oh, there's the chapstick. When Richard Gere asks, what is he holding? An injured cold says chapstick. So it's the actual cherry lip balm prop. And the watch. 
worn by Richard Gear. There's some props used in the movie. There's a little coffee shop that's right next door, which is gone. I'll actually take you over there in a moment and tell you all about it. There's another prop used in the movie here. So why had the eye bar sheared at such an unlikely point? Bennett would never know the answer unless he found that missing piece somewhere in the ooze and the silt of the riverbed. He ordered the army's scuba divers into the river. Amazingly, they found what they were looking for. The fracture surface was rusted from being on the river for a month or so. There's more props from the movie. Look at this, it looks like a steel cable. But it's actually just rope and painted to look like a steel cable. Giant pieces of concrete used in the movie to make it look like the bridge fell and was pieces of steel and concrete. Seems like the men in black were here in Point Pleasant after the bridge collapse and after the Mothman was in town and he would, they would supposedly scare locals into not talking about what they saw with the Mothman. So here is Carolyn Harris. And he was the owner, uh, she was the owner of the steakhouse down here. And I actually got to talk with her, and she told me all about her encounters with the Mothman and her husband that died on the bridge. Anyways, uh, I'll go to the actual location and tell you a little more about that. I've been buried in the sand. I couldn't see. And I thought I heard the creature fly off. runs after the bar to investigate. There, he discovers a pair of large glowing eyes. He immediately to report a strange thing. Eventually, Point Pleasant embraces the mysterious creature that put it on the map, and in 2003 erects this 12-foot-tall stainless steel statue. And ever since opening his museum two years later, Jeff Walmsley has continued his quest for the truth. I'll keep researching, trying to find a piece of the puzzle of the Mothman mystery, and then maybe one day I'll come up with the answer. In the meantime, this giant Mothman statue looks out over downtown Point Pleasant, where it reminds visitors. Yep, here it is, the Mothman statue, right here behind me made out of stainless steel and everybody comes here to check this out so we're over here now it's called bunker 304 but on the movie and in real life this was a diner and after watching mothman prophecies and i came here myself i did eat in here when it was a diner and I want to kind of tell you a story. The lady who owned it, her husband passed away, and I believe her son, on the bridge, which is just right over here. And I was eating inside, and she told me a story of an encounter of her encounter with the men in black. And she said that right here, right in this very spot, she said one of those black Cadillacs pulled up. And she said it looked brand new. It was a brand new car. 
Um, but it was old. It was an older one. So it looked brand new, like it was restored or something. And they were wearing clothes. They were super tall and super skinny. And they were wearing clothes that uh, they looked like they were Blues Brothers. But um, that was out of fashion at the time also. But the clothes looked new. And uh, they came in. They were real tall. She said that they had like an electrical smell to them, almost like burnt wires. They were real tall and skinny, and that they had um, their skin looked rubbery, but it had no blemishes on it whatsoever. And the only thing that was really strange to her was their eyelids. She said their eyelids looked super, super thick, um, that they and they never blinked, and it was really weird. And she went to shake their hand, and they looked at her like they didn't know what to do. So, I don't know. Uh, that was her. I don't think she was lying about it. Um, it was her encounter with the man in black, men in black right here. She said, uh, we were going to try to put an event together where we were going to have uh, like a Mothman event here. The Lowe's Hotel, which this lady who owns this is completely impossible to work with. So, we won't be doing anything at this hotel. Tried for years. So, as you can see here... There's a wall, it's a flood wall that's around the town. And when I came here years ago, probably, I would say it was 2012, uh, we came here to check uh, the whole town out. We were thinking about doing an event here. So um, we ran into some locals and they were telling us, you know, I was asking them, what's it like to live here? Like what kind of weird stuff goes on and all that. And they were telling me about uh, the weird thing that happened here lately was there was an article in the newspaper and it was from the health department and it said come in for a free blood test anybody who lives within the wall and we'll give you fifty dollars so why would they do that i thought that was a little weird so there are a lot of big chemical factories here right along the river so possibly they were going to test to see if people are getting sick in point pleasant uh from that but anyways check out the check out the you can see the mural Probably the Battle of Point Pleasant, which was the first battle of the Revolutionary War, fought right here. And you can see all the carnage and battles that happened here. So anyways, we're going to walk down and show you. Here's the Ohio River. It's like some kind of amphitheater here. And then a little farther down, there's a plaque, and it talks about the bridge that collapsed, as you're familiar with the Mothman tragedy and the Point Pleasant worst bridge accident in American history, right here. Here comes a car. All right, so we're out here at the wildlife area, and I remember I came out here probably like in 2012, and I remember one of the uh, TNT bunkers or igloos were through the woods here. So I'm gonna see if this is the same place. It doesn't look very heavily traveled because I know a lot of people come out here to try to find these. Holly didn't want to come with us. Says she's getting a headache. Yeah, here's one right here. Check it out. And there's probably another one right there because of the the way the mound goes up. And then you can see there's a trail. But here they would camouflage these from the air. They would put these. They would store uh, ammunition and TNT and black powder in here, and then. They would put the dirt all on top of it so it couldn't be seen from the air. So check it out. Yeah, look how thick these doors are. Ooh, listen to the echo in it. Hello, Mothman.
Where are you? This is crazy. Dude, all you have to do is barely move in here. Let's see if there's another one over here. Now the locals that I was talking to told me about every once in a while, this is a wildlife sanctuary or a wildlife refuge. You can hunt and fish out here. But every once in a while, they close this area off and they say, everybody needs to be out. There can't be any hunting out here because some of these igloos might explode because we don't know what's in some of them. So you're trying to tell me that the United States Army or the United States government doesn't know where their explosives are? So I'm having a hard time believing that. I don't know what this is. So why are they running people out of here when this area has been decommissioned? But anyways, that hill there, I don't know where, where this goes. I'll just follow it. Obviously, there's this little trail goes somewhere. Let's see what's out here. Maybe there's another one. If you use Google Earth, you could definitely see uh, something. Something big has gone this way and has climbed up that hill right there and has pushed down all that grass. But I don't know if that's a another igloo or not. Let's see where this trail goes. Oh god, it keeps going. I don't know if I'm gonna actually pull up your um, pull up your map. Go to um... she thinks that her. Might be from hunger. Oh, yeah, well, let's get something to eat. Hey, well, there's now there's somebody shooting out here, so we're gonna head back. We're looking on Google Earth, and it doesn't look like there's any more this way, but they are camouflaged from the air. So, but you can kind of tell where some of them are. This looks like over here, this hill, according to the satellite map, it looks like this might be some kind of a we're doing some bulldozing on the other side. And I just piled this dirt up over here. I'm not really sure what it is. But it's definitely exciting seeing one of the TNT silos or igloos as they call them here. I guess it wouldn't be a silo. A silo would be more of a Tall cylindrical tube. This definitely is more like a uh, look at that, and there it is right there. You can't even see it. The only thing you can see is you can definitely see uh, on Google Earth, you can see the trails and the roads that lead to all of these. Well, I think that's going to do it from Point Pleasant. We're going to go ahead and head back to the Thomas House in Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee. Now we're going to go try to find something to eat. Get back and check on Holly. shooting again. So pretty much if you come out here, here's a little trick or a tip. 
if you come out here, look for these barricades. That's where the roads used to go to all of the um, silo or the, the, the igloos, sorry. So if you go down this road, you're going to see them on each side and they run, they run alongside the road here. Anyways, awesome.